I like to start my talk on the current status of robotic <coughs> urologic surgery in India. Dr. Bhandari has chosen me for this topic. He knows that I have gone through all the development of the robotics in India. As you all know, the Asia has got the world's largest and most populous continent. It is covering 30% of the land area, 60% of world population. We have 24 nations and out of that only 9 nations have got the robotic system. This is the latest uh, uh, <coughs> discovery, uh, disclosure from the Intuitu Surgical that they have got 1478 robots in USA and in Asia they have only 126 out of which Japan, Korea has got the largest number then Japan, China and then India has got the 15 uh, robots. And these are the robotic surgeries which have been done in Asian countries just for a comparison. This is the figure up to 2010 and in India this is the latest figure up to 2011. 2170 procedures have been done in different specialties. Now the first robot in India came in 2002 in Escort's heart center for the purpose of the heart uh, surgery. Then it came to All India Institute of Medical Science in 2003 and then came in KR Hospital in 2003 for the cardiac surgery. Uh, these uh, two robots, the in escorts, this was moved to Fortis by urologist in 2007. Then again they have purchased a new robot uh, in escorts. And uh, then the, this care uh, robot from Hyderabad was moved to Pune in Galaxy Hospital. And now this is performing all other kind of surgery than the cardiac. So this is the story of the cardiac surgery. Then coming to the urology, in 2006, we started the first robotic urologic program in the country in July 2007, uh, 2006. Dr. Hamel and me, we joined together to start this uh, program. And then in 2009, another machine came in the uh, cardiac center in, and then 2009 came in Medanta. And so you can see that uh, during all these 10 years, the progress have been very slow. And even after 2006, uh, we have to wait for four years more to get the uh, another robotic system. And this was basically, I considered it as to be a latent period. And we were the one who were making the building or the program to be ready in this country. And then, uh, this is the Rajiv Gandhi Cancer Hospital added in 2011, Mulji Bhai Patel Urology Hospital in 2010. So these were the only robot in the system. Then thanks to this Vatikuti Foundation in 2011, we have this robot in Asian heart, then in Bangalore, then in Calcutta, Hyderabad and Chennai. So this is the current number of the robots in the country. This is one robot is in the World Laparoscopy Hospital in Gurgaon, in which has been also installed in 2011. And this robot is for the training purpose. And uh, this uh, center has started a uh, organized training program in the robotic for the day, five days program. And these are the different procedures which have been done in different hospitals. As you see, some centers are doing multi-specialty and some are doing just in urology. Like Nadiad are doing only in urology and Rajiv Gandhi, this uh, cardiac centers is doing only cardiology, but some centers have doing the multi-specialty urology. Now these are the two robots which I have opportunity to work. First was the four system in Ames and then in the Vinci SI in Medanta. I want to just give you the glimpse, uh, the kind of surgeries which can be done. As you have already heard, Dr. Indarveer Gill, that any procedure, laparoscopy in urology now can be done in, uh, with the robotic system. So we have done uh, 623 patients were operated, 640 procedures in that four, uh, five years time. And radical prostatectomy was the most common, then radical cystectomy, partial cystectomy. Then we have got reconstructive procedures like pyeloplasty. And then we have also the uretro, this vesico-vaginal fistula repair, utero-vaginal fistula repair. We have done the ablative procedures. This is what we wanted to see, what are the potential of the robot, can we do all these procedures or not. And this is some of the glimpse that all kind of cases, uh, prostate I'm not uh, talking here, but the all kind of PUG obstructions we have done with uh, robotically. We have done bilateral simultaneous pyeloplasties. We have done a bladder pheochromocytoma, retrovesical hydrated cyst, uracal tumor, renal tumor with label 1 thrombus, this nephroureterectomy for TCC of the uh, transitional cell carcinoma of the ureter and pelvis. We have got the adrenal sparing removal of pheochromocytoma, retrocaval ureter, radical cystectomy, 
and this is the list of 17 which we have done concomitant procedure two operations on the same patient at the same time so this is the procedures which is done at uh, Mulji Bhai Patel Urology Hospital during the one and a half years time. Again, the most common was the radical prostatectomy, partial nephrectomy, pyeloplasty, and you see the whole variety of procedures. The radical prostatectomy is the most common procedure for which this robot was started initially. And this uh, slide shows you the numbers. The number, you see the numbers are limited because early patients are, of cancer prostate are not coming in India. And that's why you are seeing this less number in comparison to the US, where they are 90% are diagnosed early in India, 90% are diagnosed late. Now, I'd like to just highlight two more issues here now. One is this learning curve. You have heard that machine is not doing the job, it is the surgeon. So we decided to evaluate the single surgeon learning curve, the impact of learning curve, and I have analyzed 140 radical prostatectomy, which was done by me, which divided the cases into four groups. Now see the operating time when we started, it was 220 minutes. It came down now to 120 or 130 minutes. The blood loss is starting 400 or 500 ml, which came down to 150 to 200 ml now. And then the blood transfusion, initial first cases, few cases required blood transfusion. Now it has come down to zero. Even we are not doing any blood grouping or cross matching for our patients. The overall complications have also come down. The bladder neck contracture has come down to zero now. And the positive surgical margin, that is a still a problem. And because of the advanced cases, what we are getting in our country. The continence rate have also improved uh, with the uh, number of cases what we have done. So definitely the, there is an impact of the learning curve. So first, after first 35 cases, operating time, blood loss, transfusion rate, overall complications, low conversion, this has improved significant improvement in continence after 70 cases. However, there is no significant difference in positive surgical margin and potency. So this is area where we have to further improve ourselves. Now the cost, as you have heard since morning, cost is a real uh, problem in India. So what we recommend is a multidisciplinary use, extend indications on a specialty, don't restrict to one or two type of cases, minimum instrument per case, Combine two, three cases and as many cases possible in a year because annual maintenance contract of the machine is same whether you do 100 cases per year or you do a 1000 cases on the same machine. On this basis, we have got this Medanta Vaticuti Institute of Robotic Surgery and I like to just give you the figures of last one year and nine months. What we have done, cardiac cases 17, urology 212, gynecology 49, <laughs> thoracic 19, GI surgery 2, liver transplant 6, and ENT uh, 5 cases. And this is the again list of the variety of procedures. We have done all kind of cases uh, with the robotic including the retroperitoneal lymph node dissection with the robotic system. And this is our team and all surgeons together and as we have mentioned that we are helping each other for these cases. To conclude, development of robotic surgery is slower in Asian countries. Robotic surgery is practiced in few countries and hospitals in Asia. Cost is a privating factor. Most robotic machines are funded either by government or charity and the cost is subsidized. Even in Medanta, we are not having any charges for the robotic system, so this is subsidized by the hospital. And overall cost of the robotic surgery is much less in India and with this, as in comparison to the US or Europe with the same kind of the outcome now. The robotic radical prostatectomy is the most common procedure. After initial learning curve, outcome is equal. Multi-specialty use of robot can bring down the cost. And the final, again, the cost has to come down. And if we have a competition with the NT2 surgical, this will happen in future. So that this robotic surgery can be affordable by a large population in Asian countries. I'd like to thank you all for your patient listening. Thank you, Dr. Gupta, for giving overview of the current status of urology robotic surgery in India.